Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which will be focused on hashing our file uploaded names to ensure better security practices within our Django applications. Now, as an example here from the OWASP website here, which of course focuses on website security and the lot, in the file upload section here, um, we can see this is the file upload cheat sheet. There are some general pointers given to us in terms of ensuring better file safety and management. Now, one of them I'm going to cover in this video tutorial, and that's going to be focused on changing the file name to something generated by the application. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, of course, what you'd need to have in place to get started with this video tutorial is just a simple Django project that you have that you want to apply this towards. Okay, so once you've got that in place, let's get started. Right, so let's go ahead and start off by creating a Django app. So we can navigate to our terminal and stop our server. And we can just say Django dash admin start app. And I'm going to call this uploads as an example. You can give the app name anything that you desire. It's really up to you. So we can see it's been created and we can confirm that right here. So here's our Django app called uploads. Let's just register this now in our list of installed apps. So we can navigate to our settings.py file. And you want to scroll down until you see your installed apps list here. And what we can do is we can just add uh, some space. And you just want to add here that particular app that you created. So in this case, I have uploads. I'm just going to put here uploads and add in a comma at the end. All right, perfect. So make sure you've added that in. Now to just make sure that it works, just as a final confirmation, we can just run our server by saying python manage.py run server. Okay, let's head on over to our application, refresh, and it's still working fine, perfect. Right, so we can close this up now. And now we can go ahead and get started with creating our file upload model and then also to create the hashing function as well. Now, what I recommend you do is to head on over to your uploads app here. Then in your models.py file, you want to define both your function and your model. Okay, so let's go ahead and define the model first of all. Now, please make sure that once you've defined the model that you don't make the migrations yet because we need to then create a function and then adjust the model. So I'm just gonna create the background first. So please make sure you don't make your migrations too soon. Right, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to now create my model and I'm going to call it document. So I'm going to say class document. Okay, and then we want to create our own Django model. And to do so, we need to inherit from models.model, add in a colon at the end. Then we need to specify the attributes or fields that we want to have part of this model. So you can decide what you want to have for yours. Okay, I'm just going to keep it rather straightforward. So first I'll have a title, I'm going to say equals. And I want this to be based on the title of the uploaded file here that we're going to set up at the model level. So not on the file upload level to make sense here. So I'm going to say models.char field. And I'm going to set the max length here to, let's say a hundred characters. I don't want the charger to be longer than that. So I'm gonna say max underscore length equals, and I'm going to set that as a hundred. Next, I want to have a field for my file upload. So a file field um, data type. So I'll just say file equals models dot file field. And we're just going to leave that empty for now. We are going to add something in the parentheses, but not, not just yet. And finally, I want to have a, another field that is uploaded at, so like the upload time. So I'm going to say uploaded underscore at equals, and this is going to take focus with the date time field. So I'm going to say models dot date time field. And within parentheses, we're going to pass through auto underscore now underscore add equals to true, because we want um, the time to be set automatically to the event 
that occurs when we are actually uploading our documents or objects. And we want that time to be automatically set according to the time of upload. Now, I don't want it to show object one, object two, object three in Django admin. So we're going to set up a string method here that's going to display the title in the admin. So I'm going to say def, and then we're going to say space double underscore, str double underscore, and we want to pass through self, colon, and then we want to return the title. So we're going to return self.title. So of each object, we want to return the title of each object so we can see that more coherently. Perfect, so this is the model structure you need. So make sure you don't make the migrations. We just wanna get this out of the way first. All right, perfect. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually where the main part of this video tutorial comes to play. So we wanna hash the name before saving. So of course the key part is to hash the file name to enhance security. And by doing it this way, sensitive data such as our file names are not stored, you could say directly. So let's go ahead and do just that. So right above your model here, you want to import the hash lib module. So you can say import hash lib. So it's like the hashing um, library. And this is going to ensure that the file names are randomized before saving them. And that's one of the use cases of this hash lib module. Right, so now what we wanna do is we want to go on ahead and create our hashing function. So we can just say def, and I'm going to call this hash underscore file name. And within that, we're going to pass through two parameters here. So we'll have instance and we'll have file name. So that's what we're going to be passing through. So the instance of each file and the coinciding file name. Right, now the first thing we need to do is we need to create a unique hash based on our original file name. So I'll create a variable here called hashed underscore name equals, and we're going to utilize a hash lib module. So we're gonna say hash lib. Then we want to use SHA-256. So we're going to say dot SHA-256. So don't worry, after I've created this function, I'm going to take a deeper dive and explain more explicitly. And we're going to pass through our file name, which we want to encode as follows with utf-8. And we're going to set that as a hex digest. So we're gonna say dot hex digest. Okay, perfect. Now the next thing we wanna do is we want to get the file extension. So is this a .jpeg file? Is this a .pdf file? Is this a .txt file? So what you're going to want to do then is, let me just uh, scroll down. We want to just say file underscore extension equals file name. And within square brackets, you want to say file name dot r find. And within quotes, you wanna put a dot. And outside the parentheses, you just wanna put in a colon. Now the final thing you need to do here, which is going to sum up the whole use of this function is we want to return the hashed file name with the original extension, okay? And we can do so by using string formatting. So we can say return F and in double quotes, we wanna pass through our placeholders, which will be for hashed underscore name. And then our second placeholder here will have file underscore extension. Okay, right, so let's take a deeper dive at the code we have here. So we have here, of course, file name dot encode utf8. So this is going to encode the file name string to bytes, which is necessary for hashing. We then, of course, previously have hashlib dot sha256. So this creates a sha256 hash of our encoded file name. We then, of course, have file name and within square brackets, we have file name that are find. And of course, this is going to allow us to extract the file extension from the original file name, whether it was a PDF or JPEG or .png, anything of the like. And of course, to sum up here, what we're doing at the end here is we are returning a string that will combine the hash name with the original file extension. And that is essentially also summing up the whole purpose of the function that we have here in play. Great. So that's the function that you need into place here. Now what we wanna do is we want to update our document model to use the hash file name function. So we're going to modify the file field in the document model and we want to change it. So in the parentheses here was file field, we have upload 
underscore two equals, and that's going to be according to our function name, which was a hash file name. So whenever we upload a file, it's going to go through this function that's going to carry out the process that we've just explained on upload. And we're going to set this to hash underscore file name, just like that. So let's take a look at what's going to happen now. Let's explain it. So when a file is uploaded now, the file name will be passed to the hash file name function before the file is stored and the file will be saved with the hashed file name. So you will no longer see the file name that the user uploads in case it's sensitive or exposes some sensitive information um, that could prompt um, anyone with malicious intentions to get curious or to, how can I say, expose that file in said way. All right, perfect. So that's what we need to do. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and make our migration. So let's do that. So now we can head on over to our terminal and you just want to say Python manage.py make migrations. And that's going to create our model document and we want to push this model to our SQLite database. So we're going to say Python manage.py migrate and we want to run that. Perfect, there we go, perfect. All right, we can clear that up. Okay, now before we go ahead and register this model, what we want to do now is we want to make sure we've got everything set up with our directory and all of the process here with our media URL, our media root, and all of that. So let's go ahead and set up our file upload settings. So we can navigate now to our settings.py file, so we can open that up right here. And let's scroll down. Okay, and we're gonna do this. We can do this at the end actually. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to set up the file upload settings. And first of all, we need to set up our media URL. So we can say media underscore URL equals, and here within quotes, we're going to say media um, port slash. So this is the URL to serve our uploaded media files and then we want to set the path where the files will actually be saved to so that will be the root so we can say media underscore root equals and then we'll say base underscore dir and then we're going to have media so essentially you don't need to create this folder okay the first time you upload a file it will automatically be created so what will happen is django is going to upload all of your media files in a media folder, which will be located in the base directory. So essentially it will appear here within Elevate here. So along with Elevate Uploads, SQLite, Manage.py, it will, it will appear here in the base directory, a media folder will be created and all of our um, uploaded files will be in that folder and it will be served by this URL. Okay, so that's what we need to make sure that we have in place here. Right now, what we want to do is we want to ensure that we're able to actually serve these files. Now, to actually do that, we need to head on over to our main urls.py file here. And we can remove uh, these comments. And I just want to add in some space here is my URL patterns list. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import our settings.py file. So to do that, you would need to say from django.conf import settings so that way we're going to have access to everything in our settings.py file such as the variables media url and media root that we specified and we're also going to want to import the static function as well so that we'll be able to serve these media files so to do so we would need to say from django.conf.urls.static import static all right, and now what we can do is we can actually just make a space here. Just we can add a plus here at the end of URL patterns. And with that static function, we can open that up. So we can say static. And here within parentheses, we want to now bind the media URL to our media root. And this will allow us to serve the media files themselves. So we're going to reference the variables according to settings here. So that's why we imported the settings file. So from the settings.py file, so we can just say settings dot media underscore url we want to connect that to our media root so we can just say document underscore root equals settings dot media underscore root just like that 
So these are the variables that you've set here essentially for media URL and media root. Okay, so we've got that into place. All right, perfect. Now the next thing that we want to do is we now want to go on ahead and register our model, create our super user, and then do some testing. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue with the process. Just make sure that you've added in the following. So now we can go to our admin.py file. And let's go ahead and import our model. So we can say from dot models import and it was called document. So you can just check here as to what the model name was. So we have document here and we can just register that. So we can say admin.site.register. Then we can pass through the document model. Perfect. Now let's create our super user. So in your terminal, you can say python manage.py create super user. And I'm just going to say uh, Arno as an example. Skip the email, add in a password. And confirm that. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and run our server. Okay, let's uh, head on now to our admin page. So you can head on to your main um, homepage and then put in forward slash admin. And now we need to just enter in our super user credentials. So let's go ahead and do just that. Right, so welcome back. So now all you need to do is log into your Django admin. Okay, and here we can see we have our upload app and our document model. So we can click on that. And let's go ahead and add a document. You can add in a title here. So I'm going to keep it um, very um, basic. So I'm going to say working document one. Now we can choose our file. So let's have a look here at my desktop. And you can see, for example, I have one that says company payroll and the next one company email addresses. So if a user were to upload something like this, it's quite sensitive in, in the light if someone had access to, you could say, wherever you're storing your files on, they would automatically see this if there was some sort of breach. So that's why it's important to hash these file names because just now someone put something sensitive in the file name, like an actual email address, you could say, or a home address or anything of the, or a bank number or a bank account number or anything of the like. That's why it's important that these file names are hashed. Okay, so that's the use case for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on to the section here and we're going to say choose file. And I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to say company payroll open and say save. You can see that that document was added. Let's click on this document, working document one. And we can see that that file name has changed and it's been hashed now. And we can see it's .pdf, okay. And of course, if you were to open it, you'll be able to see your document at hand perfectly fine. And we can also refer to our application and you can see that a media folder was automatically created for us. And there we can see is our file as well. Okay. So our PDF document. All right. And of course we can just open that and view it. And here we can see it just says company payroll as an example. All right. So of course you can also download it, but there we go. We can see it's served on the media URL and we can see it's been hashed. Okay, let's go ahead and do a, another example as well. So we can also test this with a, another file upload that we want to do. So let's go ahead and do just that. Right, so let's go back to our admin and do another test. Let's go to our document model, add another document. I'm going to say work document two, choose file. And I have company email address as an example. And I'm going to say save because that document was added. Let's go to work document. And we can see here that that file name has also been hashed as well. So now we can go ahead and just open that up and we can see just as one through. But as you can see, it has been um, hashed. So that does improve the security. And we can also see that file is here as well. All right, perfect. All right, guys, so that's it on this video tutorial on how we can change the file name to something generated by the application. So in our case, we did some hashing just to hash that file name in case anything sensitive was put in the file name to begin with. All right, guys, so that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, thank you for the support and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.